This video discusses how to calculate returns in financial markets. So what I've got up on the screen here is an Excel spreadsheet where I've got data from 1963 through to August 2015 and I've got two price indexes. So first of all in column C this is uh, my portfolio which had a price that started in value at $5 in 1963. We can see the price changing across time and the terminal value in 2015 here was actually 1873 I've also got a market index and the market index uh, began at a notional index value of uh, 100 in 1963 through to an index value uh, in 2015 and lastly here I've got a risk-free rate which is expressed as a risk-free rate as a percentage per annum so first of all, the reason that we work in returns rather than prices, such as those I've got on the screen here, is that returns are a standardised version of price. Take for example column C and D. If I wanted to compare the performance of this portfolio against the market, it's actually quite difficult to actually look at the prices here and, and do that comparison because they've got different starting points. So by calculating returns, we're normalising in the sense that both assets are starting at the same value and we can look at how those prices change across time to assess how our portfolio compared relative to the market. So the most simple way of calculating returns is to look at the change in the price across time. Now one thing I should note is that the price that we should be looking at, for example here in column C, should be an adjusted price. That is, it should be ad adjusted to not only reflect changes in prices, but it should also incorporate changes or adding back dividends from dividends that were paid out and also adjustments due to bonus issues, share splits, uh, and other capitalization events such as share issuances. Now if you download data from a data provider such as Yahoo Finance, you'll notice they actually give you a price and an adjusted close price. And it's that adjusted close price we want to use because it adjusts for those types of issues. So I've got my adjusted price series here. So the first thing is I can look at the change in the adjusted price from month to month by simply looking at the percentage change. So how I can do that is I can say equals current price minus price in the previous period in parentheses divided by previous price. So I've got it that in the month of July 1963 the return was 0 0.0038 or 0.38% per month. Now if I hover my cursor over the bottom right hand corner of that cell and double click I can actually then drag down that formula so what you can see is that it's the same formula just drag down for each of those values. Now I want to do the same again for the market. So for the market I'm going to say so the market return in this month was the current market price minus the previous market price divided by the previous market price that's my monthly change in adjusted market index and what I've calculated here is I'm going to call RP return on my portfolio and RM my return on my market. Last of all I've got my risk free rate. Now this is currently stated as a percent per annum which is the norm, that's the convention in interest rate markets that we express interest rates in annual terms. Now if I want to convert that uh, to monthly terms all I need to do is divide that interest rate by 12. Because I've got monthly returns for my portfolio on the market I also need to be working with respect to monthly returns for my risk free rate so I'll simply drag that value down there and I have my monthly risk-free rate of interest. Now all these values that I've just calculated in this particular method of calculating returns is adopting simple interest. That is, we're not taking into account uh, effects of compounding, we're just looking at the simple return on a dollar investment for each month. So what I can do if I want to then calculate the average return on each of these three different assets across time is that I can type equals average and take the average of that series of returns that I've just generated. So in this particular case the average monthly return for my portfolio was 1.1%. I can do the same for the market. I just want to quickly step through how I did that shortcut. So I've written equals average of open parentheses. I've then clicked on the top cell in that column and then held shift and control and pressed the down arrow and what that will actually do is it will take the cursor down to the bottom value in that series. I can close my parentheses, press enter, and I can see I've got my return on my market.
So again, the benefit of returns is I've now normalized, I'm comparing uh, like to like, and I can see that at the moment, even though I haven't controlled for risk, my portfolio has not a higher return than the market. Do the same thing for the risk-free rate. And there I have the average risk-free interest rate as well. So that's calculating returns from a price index uh, using monthly returns and then uh, accumulated them to look at the average returns across different assets. Uh, as I said, this is just using simple interest, which is going to be the convention we stick to in this course for, for simplicity. But in the next video, I'll give a demonstration of how it can be done uh, using compound interest. Thank you for listening.